If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. It's free. There's creation tools that allow you to record, edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you, so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Hello, people. This is Twinka, and I'm here with Twin. Yo. And welcome to another week. So uh, this week, our show was uh, uh, Terrell, um, st- um, streaming on Hulu. Um, and I'm going to let Twin go into the other details. All right. Tyrell, which I don't know why it was called that, but anyway, uh, was released December of 2018 in the box office. Again, I don't know why, but it was written and directed by Sebastian Silva. And Tyrell's little synopsis goes, Tyrell spins out of, Tyler spins out of control when he realizes he's the only black person attending a weekend birthday party in a secluded cabin. Now, as far as the characters, we have my boy Jason Mitchell, who is from the shy, at playing Tyler, the main character. We have Christian uh, Christopher Abbott playing Tyler's friend, John. We have Caleb Jones playing Pete. He's the, the crazy white boy who uh, he always plays a crazy white boy in every single movie I play. I've seen him in. And we have Michael Sierra. We might know him from Superbad. And he plays Alan, the latecomer that Tyler takes a liking to. And there is Nico, whose house it is. I'm not sure who plays that. But anyway, so let's get into the ins and outs of this movie. Like, Twinka, what do you think? Um, I don't know. I feel like this movie, it, like, when I started watching it, I felt like there was so, like, it, it, I'm like, okay, it's going to get to a point. It's going to get to a point. It's going to get good, 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 good. And then they they dropped me, bro. They dropped me. I'm like, I didn't. I really didn't understand the purpose of this movie. Like, I was lost. Oh, this movie, to me, was almost worthless. Like, I'm a writer. I write screenplays, so I appreciate the art. I appreciate the directing. You know, the visuals and all that stuff like that. But. This movie. I want my hour and thirty and some change back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I I mean I legit can't blame you. Is not this movie was what we call anticlimactic. There was no climax of the movie. There was no high point in what was going on to the movie at all. There's nothing happened in this movie. This this thing was. Ridiculous. Yeah, I don't know what message they were trying to put out there for us audience, but I they lost me. They really did. Right. So, oh, man. So this podcast, we are filming, actually recording in the dark, actually. So we are going above and beyond for this podcast. <laughs> just To, to reveal this crazy movie, yo. <laughs> this crazy ass movie. Which is almost worthless. So, I mean... Ugh. And it's hot, guys. Let me tell you. The power has been out for a couple of hours now. It is burning up hot. Like, we're doing the most right now. I got my hot spot on. He got his spots, his hot spots on. You know, we had to use multiple computers to try to use the time in it to make sure that they don't die before we get this podcast completed. So, it's, it's a lot for... Of a movie that didn't do too much for me. I mean, I feel bad. I feel bad because we are doing this for a movie that pretty much sucked. And I hate, I I literally hate saying that movie sucked, but this one kind of was trash, bro. And don't worry, guys. We're not going to hold you for a whole hour on this because <laughs> I ain't got an hour worth for nothing to talk about. Yeah, really don't. Really don't. So let's go through some stuff that we actually have talking about. So, I mean... He was, we found him he, um at the beginning of the movie. He was pushing the car because he ran out of gas. And he met they met this uh older lady named Sylvia, who Tyler seemed to take a liking to, you know. She gave him hugs instead of handshakes and all that good stuff. But once they got to the house, 
the the drinking started and they started playing this little little I want to say racist game, but it didn't really turn racist till later on. I mean, which it so the game pretty much was they put in different accents in a hat. So they will go around the room and they'll, somebody will pull it and be like, okay, just read this in an Irish, say something in an Irish accent or say something in whatever accent. So one of the guys, Robbie, um, he he had pulled, um, when he pulled it, it was like, say something in a black accent. And he found offense to it, um, probably because uh, uh, Taylor, what's his name, Taylor? Tyler? Tyler. Probably because Tyler was there. Uh, he found offense to it. So he, you know, was like, yo, this game ain't fun. You know, we shouldn't be playing this, whatever, whatever. And I, you know, he didn't, um, Ty, what well, they call him Ty. He didn't want to be like the, um, you know, the sore thumb in the situation. He was like, no, 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 it's good, it's good, or whatever. But the, you know, the guy was like, who wrote it, he was like, well, I didn't, he, he was like, you know, what were you expecting? You know, I was, I wanted you to say it like in a, uh oh like when i say black accent i meant like old lady um new orleans accent or whatever so i mean he ty went and you know try to make this accent or whatever to fit this thing whatever but um it the game became racist once they pulled out the black accent thing and i don't think it i mean it depends on how you want to look at it i don't I don't know if they wrote that in there to be racist or if they wrote that in there because they didn't see anything wrong with it. Like they thought, well, maybe this would be, you know, maybe the black guy might think it's funny or whatever. I don't know. I mean, the the game wasn't really racist until they asked him, like they asked about the black accent. Then they trying to clean it up a little bit. And it's like, oh, a New Orleans black female accent you know and that if that was what you really meant you should have wrote that on the card you know so they we we know they ain't really mean that so or they could have because what is a black accent like what was that what does that mean because even when his friend did it his friend did like some 70s talk and then cussed inside of it so it was like so that's a black accent to you yeah i mean that's why i said i don't I don't know. I didn't. I really didn't understand. Like to me, because there was two. Pete was a guy that was kind of pushing the envelope. I felt with Ty during the movie, and I don't know if Pete. That's just just how he was, or if maybe he was trying to get a reaction out of Ty this whole movie. But Pete was the one who wrote it. So when I found out that he wasn't the one who wrote, it, I'm like, well, maybe it wasn't meant to be racist. They were just being insensitive. But I don't know. Well, a lot of people get their feelings hurt when, especially when it comes to race, you know. And you got the whole movie. You could tell, like Ty. Uh, well, I keep calling, trying to call him Tyrell, but his <laughs> name was Tyler. Which I don't know why in the movie was named Tyrell in the first place, because the dude at the beginning called him Tyrell, but he was like, "No, nah, my name is Tyler." So I, don't, I mean, that's why you named the whole movie Tyrell. But I don't know because he was the wrong guy. I mean, the guy in the wrong place, you know, the black guy that everybody thinks name is Tyrell, but his real name is Tyler because well, he's a black guy. And they saw him as being the black dude, like you, the black dude. So here's the black name. Here's your black actions. Like here's your black stereotype. Yeah, well, that don't mean you name the movie after that. But yeah, anyway, uh, I don't really see that that much racist stuff going on. You know what I'm saying? Um, you could tell the whole movie like he's never really been around that many white people before, and me as a black person, been around white people for a party of white people before. This is a typical white boy party. I, I'm for real. I mean, white people do this kind of crazy stuff all the time, all the time. I've been to multiple white parties, and they do the same exact stuff. Yeah. You bet your ass they're gonna drink it, drink their ass off, and they're gonna burn some shit. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I, I don't know what his problem was. Right, he felt he felt very uncomfortable, um, and I'm not sure if his friend gave him the whole scope of who was gonna be there. I think so, I, maybe that might have been something because 
it's as if maybe he felt like, okay, well, if my friend has me as a black friend, if I'm going to this party with him or this weekend with him, then maybe there might be other black people. But he was he was the only black guy there. And a lot of different scenes, they did bring that up that he was the only black guy there. Um, you know, they might have said something to him, whatever. But I just I feel like maybe they did that just to try to break the ice. You know, like we know you realize that you're the only black guy here. So, you know, you know, let's let's, you know, try to break that with laughter or something like that. But at the same time, it's I don't it, it felt I felt like he Ty wanted to kind to kind of pull himself away from some of the things they were doing yep. because he did either he didn't understand it or it's just, you know, it's like this ain't something I would do. So even though I'm here with y'all, why should I have to change who I am just to be cool with y'all? Right. He secluded himself. He secluded himself. When, when they were smoking weed that night, he didn't want to smoke with them. He felt the need to leave a little bit uh, and call his girl and see how that was going, you know, because he remember he couldn't stay at his house. He um he felt the need to leave. And, well, from when he lived with his girl, so he felt the need to leave when her parents came over, and, you know, and stay with his friends for the weekend. Well, yeah, because he with that his whole excuse was for going down there was he didn't want to be um, in the house with all her family. He barely had somewhere to sleep, and when he went to the weekend with this guy, he pretty much they was like, oh, well, you and him got share a bed. So he still had nowhere to sleep and he was in a house full of people he didn't know. Exactly. So it was like, so what was the purpose of you leaving? Right. And he was with a girl for three years. Like how you how you not wanna stay and meet your family and get them liking you and stuff like that? You just Well, I think he already knew the family because he was talking about the mom and dialysis. It's just that he just didn't want to be there with a bunch of people. But and I think that's another thing too. I think maybe he didn't realize there's gonna be so many people at that house. Right. Because I didn't get that. Like, you could have been home in your own bed, you know, cut up with your girl. But instead, you're... And, and that was another thing, too, with the whole sleeping arrangement. Um, So, the guy was like, okay, pretty much people sharing beds. Y'all want to share a bed? Y'all want to share a bed? So, he told pretty much Ty and his friend that they were going to have to share a room or whatever. Um, There's only one bed. He did say, mention somebody to blow up, a blow up a mattress, but pretty much they're going to share a bed or whatever. And so Ty decided that he wanted to sleep downstairs on the couch. He saw there was a couch downstairs, kind of like in the kitchen area. So he decided he wanted to sleep there. And I felt like that a little bit kind of pulled him away from everyone else because it's like, okay, everybody else was told where they're going to sleep at and they're going to sleep there. However, you seem to have an issue with your sleeping arrangement and you want to sleep down. You want to sleep away from everybody else. So it kind of makes you stand out like, okay, well, so what's the issue? Like, are you too good to share a bed with somebody else? No, as a straight man, I must say, like, it kind of feels weird to share a bed with another dude, you know? But if you are confident in your sexuality, then it shouldn't be an issue. Shit. Like, one lay on one side, one lay on one end, one lay on the other. Like, oh. you, you just go in there to sleep. I mean, even I got a twin brother. Like, even I don't want to share a bed with him. We think it's lead thieves. We close as motherfucking. Like, I do not want to share a bed with my twin brother, especially when there's other options. Well, there like, wasn't other. I mean, instead of sleeping in a bed, you want to sleep on a couch. I'll sleep on a couch. I don't know. I, don't I, I mean, <laughs> I, I think like him pulling away kind of made people think like okay well maybe he not feeling it or something whatever and you know and then even that morning you know he woke up like he didn't see it that way uh oh and, and the whole do-rag thing so um while he was preparing to go to bed he was going to put his do-rag on for his waves but then he thought about it and decided not to wear it right and it was like okay like why do you feel you have to be you know, not do your regular routine or not be you just because you're here. Well, because again, he want to be that typical black guy that they wake up, see him with a do rag on, and sit, start talking about him and all that stuff like that. He won't be that guy, you know. And at the end, they remember that he did wear the do rag, and they did say something about him. Do offer him twenty dollars for the do rag, <laughs> you know, Alan. 
off of twenty dollars. He was like, "Oh yeah, you got do rag. I bought them one of these for twenty dollars for my friend back in the day. Whatever, whatever." But he didn't want to be that typical guy. I mean, but even though all of that, you know, I ain't see nothing like extra races going on throughout the entire two nights that he stayed there. You know, I mean, I think he he excluded himself. You know, he really excluded himself. Right. Um. But yeah, I I don't know, bro. I, <laughs> I don't know how I feel about it. But he also um. But yeah, so the next that next morning when he woke up uh, for breakfast, Nico was in there, you know, about to cook dinner. I mean, well, lunch, breakfast, I meant. And he was like, you know, he he was, you know, asked if Nico wanted help, and Nico was like, sure, whatever. Um, but then he kind of, I felt like he kind of took over the meal because he was like, oh, you got grits. Like Nico already had in mind what he wanted to do, and then you know, but I felt like Nico was like, okay, I, you know, I want you to feel comfortable. So if you want to come and cook whatever you prefer to eat, then come on and cook and whatever. So you know, I felt like people were trying to make him feel comfortable because they felt they probably got a vibe that he wasn't comfortable, you know. But I don't know. What do you feel? What do you think? I mean, I don't think he took over the meal. I think he just asked him, "You got grits?" That's like people eat grits, bro. (laughs) I mean, a lot of times people think a lot into stuff that could possibly be racist or exclusion or inclusion. They're trying to include itself or exclude themselves like he was he was doing definitely. But I don't think that was like any braces and nothing. I mean I don't think he was trying to include him in anything. He just asked him, Do you want to help? And you know, he just I don't know. It, it, I think like for example okay, so when they went outside and they were like, oh we're gonna go outside and play this game. We're gonna go and they start jumping around like little frogs. And <laughs> Oh no, they was doing they was doing that workout. He's like, yeah. Oh yeah, we're gonna go outside at the breakfast, we're gonna go outside and work out and stuff like that. Yeah, so I was like, I don't wanna do that. His friend like try to make him do it and it's like his friend felt some kind of way with him not wanting to participate. And it's like, well do he do I mean, can he he has a choice not to participate. Maybe he don't wanna jump around like a little frog. Like, you know what I mean? well, the, the what I got from that is like black people don't do these things. <laughs> like, right. we just got drunk all night last night. We got up, ate breakfast, and y'all want to come outside and work out in the damn freezing it's cold snow, right? and snow. And shit. Mm-hmm. like black people don't do these things. So, and they wasn't being insensitive to him, you know. And I don't think, I don't think necessarily he was overreacting. I think it was just something that he just didn't want to do at the time. You know, I mean, yeah, I think we just like when it comes definitely, especially these days in 2021, when it comes to the racist stuff and all that, people look a lot into stuff and they make it racist, homophobic, or whatever it may be. And it's not necessarily that, it's not necessarily a fit. Nobody's really like, well, I don't go say nobody because there, there's definitely people that's try to be offensive and homophobic and all these kind of disrespectful to your race, religion, or creed or whatever. But they, I feel like some people are actually trying to look in, look into stuff and find that and to find anything they could possibly find to feel offended. Well, I don't think he was looking to feel offended. I just felt like it was just different and like a lot of that stuff he just wasn't cool with or he just didn't understand like when the boys were down there singing that song like he never heard that song i've never heard the song you know so it was like i've heard it but i mean you know the words to sing like they were all singing he was the only person that wasn't singing i know the chorus to it but kind of so it was like it's like one of the things that he just wasn't you know he was the outsider coming in and it, it was just a lot of difference. And I don't know, like, I don't understand the purpose of this movie. Like, were mm-hmm. we supposed to feel sorry for him? Were we supposed to not like him because he feels different that he's around these people? Or, like, I, I'm confused as what we're supposed to feel in this. I mean, I think we're supposed to see, like, how some black people feel when they hang around all white people. You know, you grew up as a black person in the black culture 
and then you hang around white people for the first time that you just see the differences you know yeah want to do things that black people don't usually do but i i still feel like it was just i don't know the movie just weird to me i didn't get it i didn't get it or understand the purpose of it right i mean that's this movie it was odd and then like the religion part so the guys decided they wanted to start talking about religion and they want to start burning the baby jesus and all this stuff and he got offended um ty got offended by it and you know he and was that the last night what yeah that was last so night. I, I think that was kind of like the last struggle he was already getting mad you know he said like he wanted to walk away but he felt the need to leave which was absolutely weird to me like obviously you wasn't into uh that into it when you're he was talking to your girl and they was praying and stuff like that. You was scrolling on social media. Right. But now they ain't here talking about Jesus and they got these pictures and stuff like that and they start burning them. You felt the need to leave because the look on his face gave me like he was offended. Mm-hmm. You know, so I didn't I didn't understand that at all. Like you felt the need to go to the chick house that, that you met, the older lady house, and you didn't feel comfortable over there and they ended up finding you in the street, you know, walking. Well, he was, I mean, he was drunk, I think. And then when he had drunk all the alcohol and um, they was like, oh, you know, they were kind of mad that he had drunk all of it. I don't know. I, I think, I think it's just, if anything I can say I learned from this movie is, well, I do this anyway. I have a lot, you know, a lot of different types of friends or whatever. And if I'm going to have an event and I know I want certain people there, I'm going to cater my other friends that I invite that's going to match the, the main majority of people that's going to be there. Right. And I felt like in this situation, um, what was his friend name? John. John. Yeah, I feel like in this situation, when John invited Ty to come, he should have taken in consideration, like, will John fit in with my other friends? Will he be comfortable with my other friends? And I don't think John did that. Just because you and Ty are friends doesn't mean Ty is going to be friends with your friends. What I mean, I think he's speaking like a female right now, because as a dude, it doesn't matter. Like my friend called me and tell me he he just trying to get out of the house. He ain't got nothing to do. He just don't want to be home. Let me go wherever you going. He coming no matter who's there or whatever. I got something. But, see, but weekend, to me that, but okay, and then he comes and then he gets and y'all get there and then he looks like he's not having a good time. Because remember, John on numerous occasions kept saying, "Yo, why why do you look mad?" Or "Yo, why you didn't want to do this?" Or "Yo, this." So it kind of made John not have a good time because he's still trying to check to see if you okay. Because right. he's noticing that you aren't okay. So it's like, why even do that? Like, if I know you are, I don't know, let's say you are a book nerd and you don't really like rock music or whatever, I'm not going to say, yo, come, yeah, come with me to this party. And I know that we're going to be sh- hanging on Chandelier and doing Coke in the bathroom. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> like, why would I invite you to that? Yeah, that's true. Like That's it don't you know make sense. Gonna be comfortable. Exactly, you're not gonna be comfortable. You're gonna want to leave, or and that's gonna make me not be able to enjoy myself. You know, say no to drugs, guys. Sorry, just saying. <laughs> but I don't know. Well, so sorry, Sebastian. This movie almost did nothing for us. I mean, it was. Don't get me wrong. It was written well, directed very well. Mm-hmm. I mean, but that, it, that is true. It was anticlimactic. There's nothing yeah. that happened. I was sitting there watching the whole movie, waiting on something to happen that never fucking happened. Right. So, I don't know. So, what, let's do the ratings. Lesson, blessing, a curse. Here's a curse, bro. I can't. I agree. I would never watch this again, ever. And, I mean, if y'all, if you haven't seen it and you want to watch it just to, you know, see if you agree or disagree, definitely go check it out if you want to. But I'm letting you know that this is something that I will never watch again. Well, usually we get spoiler alerts, but there is no spoilers in this movie. It's really not, Because nothing happened. It's nothing really not. happened in this movie. I was sitting there the whole time waiting on somebody ha- something to happen. That never fucking happened. You know, I, I appreciate the art of writing and directing and everything like that. But I was sitting here the whole time waiting on somebody to die, even accidentally. <laughs> accidentally or on purpose like for real i was sitting there waiting on something to happen that ain't never happened i'm like are they gonna blame the black guy for some somebody that died or getting hurt or 
God. But they, uh, they gonna want to hide the body, and the black guy doesn't agree with it, <laughs> or something like that. I was sitting there waiting the whole time. That was something that never fucking happened. So I'm sorry, but this movie was almost a. It was a curse. It was a curse. Yeah. Well, maybe that's what they wanted from us. They want us to feel like the the black guy. Like, okay, we're you know, I'm expecting craziness, and then nothing happens. Because at the end, like he's in the kitchen taking a selfie with him. Right. It's like, and that was okay. the last, the very last scene before the credits. <laughs> he was in there taking a selfie with him. Dude just bought his do rag for twenty dollars and stuff like that. So, I, I mean, know. I mean, the most uncomfortable I seen him feel was the night that he, the night before when he was drunk. You know, he he started feeling uncomfortable about almost everything they said, everything they did. You know, so. Well. And, but I can see that because, like, when he started to when he started to drink, he started to loosen up. But then they felt like he was getting a little too rowdy. However, they were having machetes, chopping things, burning stuff in the fire. Like, they were doing a lot of extra stuff. But it was like when he was drunk, it was like, oh, you're getting too rowdy. You need to go drink some water. You need to get in the shower. It was almost like don't let the black guy get riled up type thing. Right. Well, uh, yeah. I mean, I mean, so like I said, I don't, I don't get, I don't know. I mean, to each his own. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it depends on what kind of person you are, or how you f- probably feel about this movie. You know, put yourself in uh, Tyler's shoes by how you feel about all the things that went on in this movie. Because to me, I don't hang. I don't. I have been the only black guy in the room. So these are typical things, like typical. Very typical. How you gonna be the only black guy in the room with a bunch of white people and Hispanic people? Because Nico was Argentinian, and I think his friend was part Hispanic. But anyway, how you gonna be the only black guy in the room and race doesn't come up? How you gonna be the only white guy in the room full of black people and race doesn't come up? You know, it's almost impossible. Well, no, because people claim to be colorblind. So if you're colorblind, then race should never pop up. Nah, and you know that's because I know because people are fake with that. I mean, yeah, that's but I'm just saying. Shit. You and nobody's really fucking colorblind. Race is gonna come up eventually. You know, some races. If you say you colorblind, that race just came up. Race is a topic <laughs> right there. If you say you fucking colorblind, so I mean that shit is not true. But again. This movie done nothing for me. But anyway, we got plenty of movies coming up next month. We got, it's February. so Black it's Black History Month, guys. Black History Month. We got plenty of movies coming up. We got good movies. So we're going to do, what is it? Four, is it four? Yeah, it's four movies that we're going to go through and just that's it. And this time, I am picking the movies because Twin can pick the movies this time. So... <laughs> So if these movies suck, guys, I want you to know that I had nothing to do with the selection of them. <laughs> Just want you to know. <laughs> so we are gonna find out what's going on, and uh, we are gonna see what's gonna happen with next week's movies. I mean, uh, next month's movies, February. So we got a whole good lineup for you, and um, Black History. We're gonna move over to Black Things to see. Yeah. We're going to see what happens. All right, guys. Well, thank you for your time. Make sure you check out the site. Yep, site twinkleberry.com. Uh, follow me on Instagram, DJTWINTWO on Instagram. Just holler at me, you know. They'll hit us up for any comments, questions, concerns, any movie requests that you want us to talk about, any questions that you want us to go over on the podcast, we will go over. Sorry about the short episode this week but this tells me you didn't want an hour of this yeah you don't want an hour of this this movie was straight trash i'm sorry sebastian silva but i know you can do better we gonna we probably end up going over one of your movies in the future but (laughs) yep but that is all pretty much you got anything else that's all guys stay safe out there love you it'll be easy holla at you